starring the distinguished Hollywood actor Warren William and featuring Peggy Weber and Carlton Young with an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or to try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Penthouse Orphan. But first, here's a brief message from your announcer. Now, back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Penthouse Orphan. Probably the most exciting phone call I ever received was the one from my good friend and bachelor client, Felix Grayson. <laughs> I admit that I was totally unprepared for what he had to tell me. Honestly, John, honestly, I'm going to be a father. Well, Felix, that's the best one you've come up with yet. <laughs> you, a bachelor father. But you don't have to believe me. No one does, but it's a solemn truth. It says so right here in this, this letter I received from Paris today. From Paris, did you say? Why, you've never even been to Paris, you gay young blade. I know, I know, but let me read you part of the letter. Then you'll get what I'm talking about. I'm all ears. I quote... Felix, when you receive this letter, I shall probably be gone. But you will hear from my lawyer regarding the trust fund I've set up in my last will and testament. Uh Uh-huh, so you're an heir, eh? Well, congratulations. Wait, let me finish. The money left you in the trust fund is to go for the education and support of my little baby, Babette. I'm sending her to you by plane. Bring her up as though she were your own. Say, just who is sending you this Babette? It's a third or fourth cousin by marriage. I've never seen her in my life. We only corresponded a couple of times. <laughs> Good heavens, Felix. I mean, Papa Felix. When is this baby arriving? I got word by cable just an hour ago that she'd arrive at LaGuardia Airport at oh, four this oh, afternoon. Oh, oh, oh. John, what am I going to do? I've never been through anything like this before. <laughs> well, I should hope not. <laughs> what am I, a confirmed bachelor, supposed to do with a crying, helpless little baby? Well, there's nothing in the law books to answer that one, I assure you. But if I were you, I'd, uh, I'd get things ready for her arrival. Get things ready? Where? How? Why, Felix, I'd clean out one of the extra rooms you have in that very lovely house of yours and fix it up. You know, crib, high chair, dolls. Well, the usual thing. Why can't I just call up some children's home or something? They'd at least know how to raise a baby. Me? I I don't know. Why, Felix, that's cruel. Just suppose you were a little baby flying in from Paris and someone dumped you in a foundling home. How would you feel? Well... And besides, where's that fatherly spirit? (laughs) You know, it'll be fun being a daddy. Well, I suppose you're right, John. Uh... Uh, tell you what I'll do. What? I'll run down and get all the things she'll need and bring them back with me. But you have to help me get the room ready. How's that? It's a deal. I'll be at your place, say, by one o'clock. That ought to give us plenty of time. All right, I'll be back by one, and then we'll start <laughs> reconverting one of the bedrooms. So long. <laughs> bye bye, Papa. <laughs> I tell you, sir, you have to know what size dresses she wears. I shouldn't just sell you anything. Well, she's a baby. That's all I know. Uh, if the dresses are too large, can't we just uh, snip them off at the bottom? <laughs> it's easy to see you haven't been a father very long. Goodness, you don't even know how to dress a baby. Never mind whether I know how to dress a baby or not. The main thing is to get ready. 
Now, have I got everything I need? Everything? Oh, well, let me see. Um, three layettes for a baby under six months. Twenty dresses for girls ranging from one week to five years. Um... Uh, never mind, then. Go on. A uh, rocking horse, dollhouse, high chair, undies, assorted sizes, safety pins. Now, remember how I told you to fold these. Sure, like this. Now, you see how easily I learn? Now, if there's anything you've forgotten, here's my card. Give me a ring and I'll have it delivered. The only other thing that I can think of is a nice padded cell before I go nuts. There we are. You see what two bachelors can do when they make up their minds? Oh, boy, was this a job. Now, let's give it a quick once-over before we take off for the airport, John. A uh, crib, chair, dolls, dollhouse, talcum powder, safety pins... Oh, uh, say, Felix. Yeah? Did they, did they show you how to, um... Show me how? Uh... <laughs> I was so good, they awarded me my diploma in the quick change department before I even got out of the store. <laughs> oh, well, our little Babette certainly has a surprise waiting for her. Yeah. Oh, the, the poor little thing, alone. An orphan. And now she's going to be your little penthouse orphan, Felix. Tell you what let's do. What, John? Let's uh, give her a real bang-up welcome party. Yeah. Yeah, that's an idea. Now, uh, we, we could get a, a clown from the circus. Boy, will she be tickled. And I'll give her a puppy. Children always like little puppies. Swell. But if we don't get out of the airport fast, John, we'll miss her plane altogether. Oh, one last thing. What about the nurse? Did you call? All set. She'll be here before we get back. Come on, Felix. Let's give baby Babette a real welcome. Transatlantic plane from London, Paris, Berlin, unloading gate four. There it is, John. See it? Come on, let's get over to gate four. So we're right there when she comes out. Okay. Let's hurry. Here we are. The stewardess will carry her out. John, I'm so excited. Now the passengers are unloading. Any minute now. You... Yeah. Well, there, there, there's the stewardess, but she's only carrying a briefcase. Oh, be patient, man. Be patient. But, but John, everyone's off. What happened to baby Babette? Where is she? Where is she? Mr. Felix Grayson. Yeah? Mr. Felix Grayson. Oh, hey, John, that's me. Please report to the information counter. Information counter? Uh, John, they want me inside at the information counter. Come on, let's run. Good heavens, Felix, you'd think this was a matter of life and death. Uh, there it is. There's the information counter, but, but there's no one there. I don't understand. Wait a minute. Here comes a very beautiful young lady. I saw her get off the plane. Why don't you ask her about baby Babette? I will ask her. Maybe she'll know. I, uh, I beg your pardon, miss. We miss you? Uh, oh. Uh, uh have you seen a little baby? Have I seen a little baby? <laughs> no, I have not seen a little baby. You, you haven't seen a little baby? My goodness, what could have happened to her? What could have happened to which, monsieur? I was supposed to meet a little baby. She's coming from Paris. But I've been on the plane from Paris. There was no little baby. Are you sure? Are you certain? I see the whole plane with my big brown eyes. <laughs> I look at everyone in it not once but many times. There's no other baby. In fact, the only baby on the whole plane is Babette. Ba Babette? But that's the baby I'm looking for. Where is she? Where is baby Babette? You are looking for the baby Babette? Yes, I am. I thought the stewardess would carry her out, but I was mistaken. Monsieur, the stewardess will never carry the baby Babette from the plane. Of that, I can assure you. Won't carry Babette? It is impossible. But why? Why is it impossible? Because, monsieur, I am Babette. Later the next day, I found my good friend Felix over at our Madison Avenue retreat. He was sipping a cocktail and lost in thought. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Well, if it isn't the bachelor father in person. Oh, sit down and join me in a cup of sorrow. A cup of sorrow? Oh, come now. 
I saw her, too, you know. Oh, what a fool she must think me, John. Imagine me taking her home to her room and filled with everything for a little baby. <laughs> well, after all, no one said she was 18. John, isn't she beautiful? Without doubt, the most charming young lady I've ever seen. But what now, Father? What now? I only wish I had the answer. John, what are my friends going to think? I told them all about the baby coming, and now when they see her... <laughs> no, just say the plane got delayed in transit. She started out as a baby, but by the time she arrived... Why, I can see those haughty eyebrows being raised all over the place now. Papa Grayson, they'll call me. What am I going to do with her, John? It's serious. Well, she's well chaperoned, isn't she? You've got a manservant and two maids. It's quite proper, you know. Hello, Tony's a place. Oh, oh. Just a minute, please. For you, Mr. Grayson. Oh, thank you, Tony. Hello? Yes, Babette. Yes, yes, I'll come right home. Goodbye. Aha, uh -huh. on your trail already, is she? And what does Babette want now? She said... She said, come home, Father. <laughs> I'm lonesome. <laughs> I'll never forget the afternoon I called on Babette. She was even more exquisite than the first time I saw her, if such a thing was possible. Oh, Monsieur Rocane, I'm so very, very happy to see you. And I'm glad to see you too, Babette. Where's Felix? I don't know, Monsieur. He goes away early in the morning and doesn't come home until late at night. I don't think he likes me. Oh, that's a silly thought, Babette. I happen to know he likes you very much. But I call him father, and he say, No, no, do not call me father. <laughs> Why is that, Monsieur Rocanel? <laughs> well, that's understandable, Babette. You see, Felix is quite a man about town. Man about town? What is this man about town? Oh, that means that he considers himself quite a... Uh, well, how should I say it? Quite a man with the lady. Oh, what you call a lady killer, eh? <laughs> that's right. Now, when a beautiful young lady such as you comes along and calls him father... I see. He no longer is a lady killer, but only an old man who should stay at home and smoke his pipe. Is that it, monsieur? <laughs> That's about it, Babette. Well, then, I will give him a new name. A new name? Yes, something he will like better. From now on, I will not call him father. No. I will call him daddy. <laughs> Act two of Penthouse Orphan, written by Ken Crepine and directed by Robert Webster Light, will continue in just a moment. Now, back to the Strange Will story, Penthouse Orphan, with Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. During the following months, I saw less and less of Felix. He and Babette had become the best of friends, and they spent considerable time together in the museums, art galleries, theaters, and concert halls. 
After all, 32 isn't so awfully old, nor 18 so very young. Then one day, early in September, Felix called me over to his house. He said he'd come to an important decision and that I should be present. John, I particularly wanted you over today to approve my action regarding Babette. Well, what's on your mind, Felix? It's common knowledge around town that she and I have grown very fond of each other. Oh, it's no affair of the heart, I can assure you. No? No, no. Only I think that I should send her away to school. After all, she's 18 and still young enough to take advantage of education. And what does Babette say about going away to school? Well, I haven't told her yet. You know, John, she loves the city, likes to spend hours just wandering around looking into windows. Looks like uh, heaven, she says. Well, I can understand why. New York is heaven to lots of youngsters. Anyway, I want you to suggest that she go away to college. Me to suggest? What's the matter? You lost your nerve? Uh, maybe I have. I don't know what's the matter, but, John, I... Uh... After all, she's only the child of your third or fourth cousin... By marriage. Well, after all, she's Babette, and that's what matters. John, if I don't get her out of this house... I... Then what, Daddy? Babette, I... Babette, I, I didn't hear you come in. Hello, Monsieur Connell. How is the tricks? Oh, fine, Babette, just fine. And how have you been? What is my Daddy up to now? I hear him say if I don't get Babette out of this house... Now, Babette, um, Felix thinks you should go away. School. Yes, Babette, that's what I was talking over with John when you came in. I? Go away to school? Pourquoi? But why? I've already finished school in Paris. I want to send you to some lovely girls' finishing school, Babette. You know, where they teach you to ride and swim. They have all these things here in the city. He wants you to learn more, I guess, Babette. Learn more? <laughs> I, Babette, learn more? <laughs> but for what? I know all of the different perfumes. I know how to make up my face to be beautiful. I know how to be alluring. That's just it, Babette. You know all about those things, but... Now, look, I want to show you how little you know. Now, when was the War of the Roses? Now, go ahead. Tell us, when was the War of the Roses? War of the Roses. Felix, you're fooling. No, I'm not. That's just one example. All educated people know when the War of the Roses was. You, you have to learn those things to be, well, to be looked up to. Felix, Cherie. Yes, Babette? You tell Babette when was this... What you call War of the Roses. Why, sure. I, uh... Yes, Felix? You are the one with a good education, no? You have gone to the university, you have traveled. Now, now tell Babette, when was this War of the Roses? Well, now, let's see. Uh, 1492, Columbus crossed the ocean blue. No, that's not it. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, I... I... Wait, I've got it. You see what education does for a fellow? Uh, the War of the Roses, Babette, was fought on last January the 1st in a place called the Rose Bowl in a city called Pasadena. That's it, isn't it, John? <laughs> Why, of course. That's one of them. They come on year after year. Year after year. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I do need what you call this education. In Paris, we do not know there was a war. We think Americans never have what you call a revolution each year in California. All right, Felix. I will go to school. Well, Babette went away to finishing school, all right, and she turned out to be a brilliant student. She caught on quickly, too quickly, because one night, months later, she called Felix. Hello? So, so you fooled me, huh? Oh, it's you, Babette. I've been living in dread of this moment. You tell Babette a big story, Daddy. I only did it for your own good, Babette. I wanted you to go to school, honestly. Oh, the roses in Pasadena. It's what you call the baloney. I'm afraid it is. And you want to know how I know? I didn't find out from the teacher. No? Well, who told you? Gus. Gus? Who in the name of heaven is Gus? Gus is my boyfriend. His name is Gus Yakadich. Gus Yakadich? Well, there can't be anyone with a name like that. He's a big, strong fellow. He plays football, and he's a graduate of the FBI. Graduate of the FBI? What have I let myself in for? He told me War of Roses is a football game. Oh, well, he's right, Babette. I'm bringing him to New York for the weekend. I want you to meet my Gus. Your Gus? 
Bad, bad, it's it's not serious. I think I marry this Gus. He's a big, strong man. No, Babette, Babette, listen to me. Remember, I'm your father. I mean, don't do anything rash until I talk to you. Now, bring this Gus fellow up here where John and I can meet him. It's only for your own good, Babette. Yes, Daddy. I'll bring him to see you this weekend. Gus wants you to meet him, too. <laughs> I tell you, John, we've got to do something about this. This Gus fellow, who does he think he is coming in and taking Babette away from us? Away from us? Come now, Felix, it's about time we had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk about Babette. Talk about what? Well, Daddy, if I know anything about human nature, you are in love with Babette. Me <laughs> in love with Babette? Why, you talk like a... Oh, do I? Listen, Felix, I've known about this thing for months. I've watched you grow from a respectable bachelor into a fiddling, fuddling Romeo. Come on now, admit it. Oh, all right. You lawyers are too smart. Anyway, she's 19 now. Yes, that's just the trouble. Can you stand up against some young buck like this Gus Yakaditch, for example? I'll get Charlie Atlas to help me. He puts big muscles on you almost overnight. I'll take setting up exercises every morning, sleep with my window open, eat spinach. I'll show that big palooka. Now, wait just a minute. Before you do all these things, when does Babette and this FBI boy arrive? Any minute. Well, what do you say if we sort of look him over first? Let's try to find out his weak spot. Once we know it, we'll smash through for a touchdown. Oh, they're here. They're here, John. What'll we do now? Uh, take it easy. I'll let them in, and then we'll see what there is to do. Oh, Monsieur Connell. I'm so happy to see you. Babette, welcome back to New York. Uh, where is my daddy? He's in the library taking his... Ex I mean, uh, he's reading a book. Oh, pardon me. This is Gos. Gos Yakadich. How do you do? Hiya, chum. How's tricks? Oh, tricks. Oh, fine, Gus, fine. Come along now, you two. Felix will be very happy to see you both, especially you, Gus. He admires big, strong men of brawn. <laughs> That's about the end of the story. I finished the course at the FBI and turned pro. Lots of dough in professional football, you know. Yes, Daddy, you see? Lots of dough. Well, Gus, you certainly are built for professional football. Yeah. I'm six feet two with me shoes off, and I weigh about, uh, about 213. I'm afraid Atlas can't help me much, John. <laughs> Gus, you know, to me, it seems a shame that you gave up your career with the FBI. Especially if you and Babette are serious about getting married. Oh, I can keep Frenchie here and do dads on what I make. Twelve hundred a game. That's lettuce. Real cabbage. Ain't it, toots? Lettuce? Cabbage? Sounds more like soup. Well, I figured that by the time Frenchie and I get hitched, we'd really be in the clover. And when your professional days are over, can you still go back to your FBI work? Oh, any time, any time. You know, once you learn that trade, it never leaves you. I still cut hair in my sleep. Cut, cut hair? hair. Uh, 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 what's cutting hair got to do with the FBI? Oh, that's where I learned how to do it. Right over in Philly. FBI. Franklin Barber Institute. It's the biggest barber college in the East. While Gus and Babette were busy in another part of the house, Felix and I had a board of strategy meeting. There had to be a showdown, we all realized, and at once. I'm convinced, John, that if I can show Babette that I'm stronger than this Gus, I'll have a chance. But how am I to do it? Well, you certainly would look funny if you tried it with boxing gloves. I wouldn't even be able to look, period. No, it's got to be something where brains can outsmart brawn. That's the only way I've got a chance. Say, uh, what position does Gus play on the football team? A tackle, I think. Tackle, huh? Good. Then I think I've got it, John. Now, listen. I'm going to take Gus out to the kitchen and lock the door. I want you to keep Babette in here and tell her we're having a fight to the finish over her. Good heavens, you don't really mean now, to... Now, just do as I say. I think everything's going to be all right. But why does he have to lock himself in the kitchen, Monsieur John? Because... Gus will kill him. Well, Babette, that's how much Felix loves you, I guess. He's ready to die for you if necessary. But I don't want Felix to die. 
I'll miss you, I'll cuddle you. You men are all so stupid. Why do you think I brought this, this oof here today? Just to make Felix jealous so he would give me the proposal? Oh, it's Felix I love. Felix. And now Gus will kill him. We must break the door down before something terrible happens. Felix! Felix! Oh, Felix, Gus will kill you. I love you, Felix. I only want to marry with you. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. <laughs> Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of Penthouse Orphan. But first, here's a brief message from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. <laughs> I was just as anxious to find out what happened behind the locked door of the kitchen as you undoubtedly are. Well, it seems that when the boys got together... Gus, I understand you play tackle on the football team, is that right? Yeah, in front of they gotta be awful good to get by me. Gus, I tell you what I'll do. I've always wanted to learn the real secrets of being a good tackle. You? Sure. <laughs> A tackle? <laughs> Why, you ain't big enough to tackle your own shadow. Uh, never mind, never mind. I still want you to show me how. Yeah? And, Gus, for your lesson, I'm going to pay you the same rate you receive for a real game. Twelve hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. Well, come on, buddy. I'll teach you quick. Uh, Gus, don't push. Just take it easy. Now, first of all, I want to see the flying tackle demonstrated. Oh. Now, I'll stand right here, right by the stove here, and you, you you get back on the other side of the room. Yeah, I'll get back way over here. That's it. Now, uh, when I say go... Hey, you don't say go. You say hike. Oh, all right. When I say hike... Yeah. You leave the ground and dive for me. Bring me down with a real flying tackle. Uh -huh. Give me the works, everything you've got. I got it. Okay. Now, are you ready? I'm going to spring through the air... And hits you like a ton of dynamite. All right. Hike! Well, Gus, you can't hear me. But for your information, I learned that sidestep at Notre Dame. Elmer Layden never did believe too much in brawn. Too bad that stove was behind me. Well... <laughs> Have a nice nap, Gus. <laughs> well, after Babette and Felix got Gus patched up and Felix paid his 1200 they got uh, married and left on their honeymoon. And where did they go? They went to California, to Pasadena, of course, to see the War of the Roses, or should I say, the Tournament of the Roses. Next week, I have a story to tell you about a man who died and left his whole estate, almost a million dollars, to a girl he met in seething, fabulous, romantic Singapore. He didn't know her real name, and she never found out his. For a most unusual story of love, intrigue, and romance, set in that strange city of half east, half west, be sure and listen to the story we call Singapore Liz. This is Warren William inviting you to tune in again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Any similarity between names used on this broadcast and those of living persons is purely coincidental. Music